Now that we've defined the dot product of a vector, we can now define what we call the norm of the vector. So the norm of a vector is really just the length of the vector. We use this notation right here, these double vertical bars. We put that around a vector v to indicate the norm of the vector. And it is really just the length. And it's defined in terms of the dot product. So the norm of the vector v is defined as the square root of v dot v. So take v and dot it with itself. That gives us a scalar. And then we take the square root of that scalar to get the norm of the vector, which is really just the length. If we go ahead and write out what we mean by v dot v, remember that's just each component of the vector v squared, and then I'll add it up. So it turns into kind of this root sum squared, which we know is the length of a vector. So a very compact way of talking about how long a vector is. Also, if we square the norm, obviously that just turns into v dotted with itself. So sometimes in math, when you have the norm squared, you have obviously that's equal to just v dotted with v. Okay, let's do just a quick example. Let's say that my vector v that I'm going to work with is one, zero, negative three, two. And we are gonna go ahead and compute the norm of v. So that's a pretty straightforward thing to do. The norm of v is going to be the square root of the root sum squared of each component. So that's gonna be one squared plus zero squared plus quantity negative three squared plus two squared. And if we go ahead and simplify that, we get one plus zero plus nine plus four, which is 14. So the square root of 14 is what we get for the length or norm of the vector V. Let's do something else. Sometimes we use norms to help us get unit vectors. Since the norm of the vector V is how long it is, anytime we take a vector and divide by its norm, we're normalizing that vector to have a unit length. So V divided by norm V is always a unit vector. And by unit vector, we mean a vector whose length is one. So let's go ahead and you know, do a little example of that. So you know, if I was to define X as V over norm V, X is going to have length one. In this particular case, what would I end up with here? If I actually you know, computed V divided by the norm of V, which I'm defining as X right here, well, that would be just our starting vector, one, zero, negative three, two, and then we have to divide by root 14, which is the same thing as dividing by, or multiplying by one over root 14. So this I claim is a unit vector, and the direction of that unit vector is in the direction of V because, yeah, it's the function or the vector v is right there. Let's go ahead and check and actually make sure that the vector x is indeed a unit vector. So this is not a proof, but I think you can see how this works out. But for this particular example, we can you know, show that this has a length one, but we're not proving that v over norm v is one all the time, but we could do that. So let's just compute how long or what is the norm of x. So there I've computed the norm of x. And that means take the square root of each component of the vector squared. So that first component is one over root 14. So I'm gonna square that. And the next component of the vector X is zero over root 14. So that's just zero. So I've squared that. And then the next component is a negative three over 14 squared. And then finally plus two over root 14 squared. And then I have to take the square root of all that. Right, it's the root sum squared of each component of the vector. So let's just simplify that a little bit. One over root 14 squared is just one over 14. And then zero is just zero, obviously. And negative three squared is nine, so I'm gonna get nine over 14. And then four over 14. And you can see what's gonna happen here. One plus nine is 10. 10 plus four is 14. These all have a common denominator term, so I can just add those up. I get 14 fourteenths which obviously is one, and the square root of one is indeed one. So we've established that X does indeed have unit length, and the direction is in the direction of V because it is you know, in the exact same direction of V. It's just a scalar multiple of the vector V. And this happens for any vector, right? We, we showed that X for this particular case has length one, but anytime you create a vector by taking the vector, then dividing by its norm, you're gonna end up with a unit length vector. So norms are also very handy for that. So that wraps up our brief introduction and definition of what we mean by a norm. 
Now that we have that defined, in the next video we can talk about the distance between two vectors and we can compute how far apart are two vectors using this concept of a norm and distance.